When Esperanza opened her eyes again, it was almost light, and she heard Mama Hortensia and Alfonso talking in the next room. She had slept through dinner and the entire night. She smelled café and chorizo. The coffee and sausage made her stomach growl, and she tried to remember when the last she had last eaten. Isabel was still asleep in the bed next to hers, so Isabel and so Esperanza quietly pulled on a long, wrinkled skirt and white blouse. She brushed her hair and went into the other room. Good morning, said Mama. Sit down and eat something. You must be starved. At the table, Hortensia patted her hand. You missed going to the foreman's office last night. We signed the papers to live here. We already have work today. Mama put a plate of tortillas, eggs, and sausage in front of her. Where did all this food come from? asked Esperanza. Oh, uh, Josefina, said Hortensia. She brought some groceries until we can go to the store this weekend. Esperanza, said Mama, you and Isabel will be watching the babies while the rest of us work. Alfonso and Juan will be picking grapes, and Hortensia, Josefina, and I will be packing grapes in the shed. But I want to work with you and Hortensia and Josefina. You are not old enough to work in the sheds, said Mama, and Isabel is not old enough to watch the babies by herself. If you watch the babies, then Josefina can work, and that is one more paying job between us. We must all do our part. You will have a camp job, too, sweeping the wooden platform every afternoon, for which they will deduct a little from our rent each month. Isabel can show you what to do later. Where is it? What's the platform? Esperanza asked. It's the big wooden floor outside, in the middle of camp, Juan said. They, uh, Juan said they use it for meetings and dances, said Mama. Esperanza stared at her food. She did not want to be stuck in camp with the children. Where's Miguel? she asked. He already left for Bakersfield with some other men to look for work at the railroad, said Alfonso. Isabel came out of the bedroom, rubbing her eyes. Mi sobrina, my niece, said Hortensia, hugging Isabel. Go say good morning to your mother and father before we all leave for work. Isabel hugged her and ran next door. Esperanza studied Mama as she made un burrito de frijoles for lunch and wrapped the soft tortilla filled with pintone beans in paper. She looked different. Was it the long cotton dress and the big flowered apron tied at her waist? No, it was more than that. Mama, said Esperanza, your hair. Mama's hair ran down her back in a single long braid, almost touching her waist. Esperanza had never seen Mama wear her hair that way. It was always done up in a beautiful plaited bun, or when she was going uh, ready for bed, getting ready for bed, brushed out and flowing. Mama looked shorter and somehow not like herself. Esperanza didn't like it. Mama reached up and stroked the back of her head. She seemed embarrassed. I figured I can't wear a hat on top of my head with my hair there. So this makes more sense, doesn't it? After all, I am going to work today. Not a fiesta. Then she hugged Esperanza. We must go now. The trucks leave at 6.30 to take us to the sheds. Take good care of the babies and staying with Isabella, with Isabel. She knows the camp. As the three of them walked out, Esperanza noticed Mama reaching up, hesitantly touching her hair again. 
When Esperanza finished eating, she went outside and stood on the front step. Instead of facing another row of cabins, their cabin was in the last row facing the fields. Straight ahead across a dirt road were several chinaberry trees and a mulberry tree that provided deep shade over a wooden table. Beyond the row of trees were grapes. The grape row, uh, the rows of grape fields still lush. To the right, across a grassy field, was the main road. A truck piled high with produce drove by losing a cloud of debris. After it passed, the sharp smell told her they were onions, the dry outer skins being shredded by the wind. Another truck followed, and again, it, the smell bit into her senses. And I'm going to have to stop there. And that was the end of this read aloud for y'all. This book is just now getting to the parts where it gets deeper and you're understanding more about Esperanza. Y'all haven't even gotten to see what that package that um, Miguel and Alfonso were taking such good care of on the train. If you can, when school comes back or look it up online or something try to find this book it's one of my favorites it is a good one esperanza rising so y'all have a good one bye guys